Hello, uh, welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program and Massage Industry Experts. With the challenges continuing to face massage schools, students and practicing therapists, thanks to COVID and its variants, the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone continues to support virtual learning and building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who share their knowledge and expertise, not only for class discussion, but career success. Tonight's experts are Sandy Dirks and Edith Whitaker. Both have been inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2015. Enid is the managing director of Bonnie Pruden Myotherapy Incorporated. She has 40 years experience learning from and being mentored by Bonnie Pruden. She has an extensive background in physical education and currently practices and teaches myotherapy clinically, as well as in lectures and workshops. Sandy has been teaching and practicing Bonnie Pruden myotherapy since 1985. She's dedicated to teaching others how to incorporate the principles and techniques you'll see tonight to improve quality of life by lessening pain and tension. Let's listen and learn as Enid and Sandy share Bonnie Pruden's myotherapy, revealing how to easily incorporate this knowledge into your practice to simply and effectively relax client muscle tension. They'll explain how to return muscles to tension-free movement by adding on-table stretches and corrective exercises to trigger point patterns. Please have a Sharpie or similar size tool to join in their presentation demonstrations. So while you folks might be out there running around grabbing a Sharpie or similar size tool, again, I wanna thank you. I want to encourage you to chat questions during the evening, which Enid and Sandy will answer at the end of the event. And I am going to remove myself, spotlight these two, so they are side by side for the rest of the presentation. Thank you again for joining us and spotlight is going on. Okay, it's all yours. Thank you, Donnell, for inviting us. And it's a pleasure being uh, with you and um, your pleasure to work with. And thank all of you for joining us to learn more about Bonnie Myers. Bonnie Cruden myotherapy and how, how it can help you. And especially at this time of year, I bet you've all been out and about doing what you do to get ready for everybody else and treating your clients. And so hands, hands on to you for being here after a busy day. Your career of helping people also puts you in jeopardy as far as abuse and overuse of your muscles, especially your upper body muscles. And over time, if not balanced out, then you start to get your aches and pains and um, it's not a pleasant situation. The best way to get rid of tension in the muscles is with physical activity. So we're gonna start with six exercises and I'm gonna cue up Fleetwood Mac has a good tempo and it has a good message. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. So I'm gonna cue that up, put whatever you have in your hands down and sit in a chair. Um, if you're on a couch, maybe sit on the edge of it. Otherwise, if you're in a straight back, that's, that's fine. And I'll let me cue Fleetwood Mac up here. You just follow me, you won't have any trouble. Thank you. 
Now your muscles should feel a little looser than they did before we began. And what we did was we addressed the muscles that you overuse every, more, every day when you're treating your clients. You've invested a lot of time and money in, to get your career going, and now you've got to invest a little bit of time in your own muscles. So we address the um, pecs, the axilla, the biceps, the forearm, the traps, and the shoulder girdle. So if you will in, start to incorporate that into your day, I imagine you all have some kind of a, um, a routine that you have when you have a client and then they leave and you have to change the sheets, tidy up the room and so forth. So with that routine, start adding one or two of these exercises. You don't have to do them all. And um, the music that we used, we did eight of everything, eight beats. Maybe you don't have time to do eight. Maybe you only have time to do four. Maybe you don't have time to do the six exercises, but maybe you have time to do one or two. And that helps to break up the, the tension in the muscles so it doesn't accumulate in the muscle. So the key is get rid of it before it has time to tell your, tell your muscles that they're starting to ache. Um, another thing that maybe uh, if you have a school going, I, I used to teach a class called Fitness for the Body Worker at DHA, Desert Institute for the Healing Arts. And we had the students put up parkour all throughout the school, um, different pictures of different exercises in all the halls and the classrooms and the massage rooms. So that every time a student went into a massage room or into a classroom, there was an exercise that they could do. So it's a matter of incorporating an exercise throughout the day because muscles are like children. They need to be reminded and um, enough reminding will get rid of their bad habits and, um, and make, you, make your, um, your career uh, more enjoyable, pain-free, and um, much longer. Because you don't want to spend all the money to get all this training and so forth and then be hurting and not be able to take care of the people that you want to really take care of. Um, Bonnie Pruden first introduced the words trigger points and myotherapy in her book in 1980, Pain Erasure, the Bonnie Pruden Way. That's when the, the general public learned about the words trigger points and myotherapy. And Bonnie wrote 15 books, but I think she would say that is her most important book because she felt that if people had the right, <coughs> the right, um, information and the right tools that they could, for the most part, take care of themselves. And I think probably the second book that she would think was most important was How to Keep Your Child Fit from Birth to Six, because she believed passionately that um, fitness begins at birth and the body is built between birth and six. So as soon as the baby comes home from the hospital, it needs to be exercised with every diaper change. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sandy. <laughs> One of, um, as massage therapists, again, for ourselves as well as for our clients, we want to counteract what we're physically doing all day. And so the exercises that Enid showed you, um, you will be receiving a uh, handout, and actually it's not really a handout, right? It's a link that Donnell will send you that will have the exercises that Enid just went through so that you'll have something that you can look at. But again, all day long, I'm forward. And most of our clients are as well, if it, whether they're on the computer, it's a dental hygienist, their muscles are forward, their pecs are being shortened, their neck, sternocleidomastoid is being shortened, the muscles, posterior muscles are being overstretched. And so, Again, for ourselves as massage therapists, our bodies are our tools. And if you're hurting, it's gonna be really hard for you to help somebody else. One of the things um, about what we do is, Bonnie used to help people just by doing exercises with them. But once she discovered 
that by applying her to trigger points, it allowed the muscles to relax. It made her job a lot easier. So many of you have been exposed to trigger point therapy throughout your schooling or in continuing education classes. And there are several differences with the techniques that we use. One is that we do many more points. We follow the whole length of the muscle as opposed to just doing one point that will refer to a large area of the body. We do have patterns that Bonnie and her students put together where they found the most common trigger points for certain problems. So for instance, the areas that, and the reason why we asked you for a Sharpie today was we're going to start with posterior neck stiffness, or this is the same area that we would start for somebody with headaches. And so we have tools and you probably do too. Um, when I'm working with my clients on the table, I, where I can, I use my elbow. Um, sometimes I use my knuckles, but I will also use a little wooden tool that Bonnie developed and uh, Enid's husband, Don, um, developed. And so they call it a bodo. And so I will use a tool sometimes in the posterior neck when I'm working on somebody. And when I'm on my, working on myself, I will also use this just to save my own hands. So what I'd like you to find, if you either have your Sharpie or if you have another tool nearby, we're going to start with three points in the back of the neck. And what I'd like you to do is find on yourself, find your spine at the hairline. So see if you can feel that. And I'd like you to slide your fingers out towards your ear until you feel that soft little groove underneath the skull. And with whatever tool you're going to use, you're going to place the tip of that tool in the groove. Now you could muscle it. So you could press in and push up. But what I'm gonna ask you to do with, and what I'm using is not the end the black tip, I'm using the other end of the Sharpie. So what I'd like you to do is find that spot underneath the skull. And I'd like you to tip your head back towards the tip of that tool and see if you can find something that hurts. And once you've found something that hurts, you're going to hold it for five to seven seconds. On a scale of one to 10 with one, Nah, it doesn't hurt at all. And 10 is excruciating pain. We're looking for about a five or six. And if you've held five or seven seconds and I'm still talking, let off easily. I'd like you now to start slide halfway down your neck in the same groove. And now again, you can either push in or try just tilting your head back towards the tool until you have enough pressure. Again, about a five or six on a scale of one to 10. One, there's no pain. 10, it's excruciating. We don't want to uh, hurt you too much here. And then we're gonna let off easily, slide down about another inch. I'm just above where my neck meets my torso. Here, I don't really have the leverage that I'd like. So here I do need to press in at an angle towards my Adam's apple until I find something that hurts. That's a trigger point. A trigger point is simply an irritable spot in the muscle. Once I let off, I'm just gonna put that tool down and I'm going to take my fingers and do a nice circular knead to help get rid of any lingering pain left from me pressing. Even if the stiffness or pain is only on one side, we always do both sides. So now I'm gonna show you one other tool that I can use. And again, almost everybody's seen one of these. And we call this a shepherd's crook. You may have something else. Go ahead and use, Enid's gonna go ahead and use her Sharpie. I'm gonna show you how you can use another tool to work on yourself. So again, I'd like you to find your spine at the hairline, slide out until you feel that little groove underneath the skull. With this tool, I'm just gonna place it. And again, I'm going to tilt my head towards the tip of the tool until I find something that hurts. Once I've found it, I'm going to hold for five to seven seconds. I'm going to let off easily, slide halfway down the neck 
And again, tilt my head towards the tip of the tool. I'm trying to not create any more tension in any other muscles of my body. Again, my goal is to get these muscles to let go and relax. I'm going to let off easily, slide down from my third point. And again, the leverage isn't as good. So with this tool, I'm going to pull in with the hand on the curved part and away with, from me with the other hand until I find have enough pressure. And once I've held long enough, I'm going to let off and do a nice little knead. Again, the areas that we're showing you are general, the maps that we've already made for common problems. What we have found though, is that your trigger points may be different from somebody else's because it all depends on the history of how you have used or abused your body throughout your lifetime. So we take a look at when we're doing a client history, we look at how they were born. We look at accidents they've had, occupations that they had, any disease processes. We want to know how they've used their body and where there might be an accumulation of trigger points. But again, there are some common patterns. And again, where we're starting with tonight is for headaches or stiff necks. The next area is a little trickier to get at. I'm gonna turn my back, I'm gonna tell you where it is. You can reach it sometimes with a Bodo or your Sharpie. And where it is is, here's the edge of my scapula and here's my spine. I'm gonna go halfway in between those two places and I could reach around with my Bodo I could reach around with my Sharpie and I'm going to try and press into that point. That's why we did this exercise, right, Enid? See if we could get back It helps. <laughs> it helps, it helps. That's in all of Bonnie's books, that's point number 18. It's in your upper back. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. If there's somebody near you and they want to put their elbow in that spot, that works too. Again, if I'm using a tool, if I have something like this, I just reach around and push away. Okay, while we're here, the other area that you might have troubles with is the tops of your shoulders. And typically the pattern that we start with is a triangle where we do two points right where the seam of my shoulder is in between the neck and the acromion process. So we're in the meat of the muscle itself. And then we're going to do one point behind that, just above the spine of the scapula. So again, I can use my Sharpie starting next to my neck in that trapezius. Enid's got a Bodo. She's going to press straight down. Oh, and see, I can tell I haven't done these in a while. See if you can find something that hurts. <laughs> Again, it may be a little bit left or right for you. Don't be afraid to move the tool around a little bit to find the best point. Once I've held it long enough, I did this one. I'm going to go out towards the shoulder a little bit, catch a second point. That one's referring up to my ear. Not unusual for these to refer in different places. And then the third point is halfway in between those two, but drop back towards your shoulder or actually towards the back as I slip and press straight down, down being towards your feet. And once we let off, we're gonna need that. And then I'm gonna grab this other tool to show you how I would hold that. Enid will probably use her Bodo. So I'm again, I'm next to my neck on the trapezius. If I have a tool like this, I press down and away. If I want a little bit more exquisite point, I can tilt my head away and put the trapezius a little bit on a stretch away from the tool. From there, I'm sliding out towards my shoulder and again, pressing down 
and away. That's another good one. <sighs> and then my last point is halfway between the two and drop back towards your back, just above spine of the scapula and pressing. And then I'm letting myself relax for a few seconds. Letting the pressure off. And kneading that area. After we've done an area or two areas, if I had my client on the table, I would work these points, asking them to give me feedback as to how hard to push or how much force to use. Again, when you're working on yourself, you can get every area of your body, um, whatever is hurting. Again, we work through the full length of the muscle. We work the muscles in front of the problem, to the side of the problem, and the problem area itself. After we've worked those areas, we usually do a stretch, and I'll have Ina take you through that. And then when we send someone home, or again for yourself, we do corrective or homework exercises throughout the day to build the good habit in the muscle of going through a full range of motion. Okay, Ina, do you want to take them through neck rest series? Yeah, and, and then you'll see um, the difference between series? doing it with music and not music. When you do it without music, oh, okay. it's boring. <laughs> it is. Okay, Ina, here we go. So you're going to tip your head back. Two, three, four, and forward. Two, three, four, and back. Two, three, four, and forward. Two, three, four, and back. Two, and forward. And one more. We usually do repetitions of four. And forward. And then looking down, you're going to look to the side. And then the other side. And look to the side and the other side. And three and four. And then head up. And then you're going to put your ear to your shoulder. This is an 83 year old neck that's had a lot of injuries. <laughs> so it doesn't go all that far, but it doesn't have any pain either. And then the other side. Yeah, I had my first neck injury when I was six on my sled. I came up against a snowbank. <laughs> but if you're doing these, if you feel a tightness or a pain somewhere, you can hold the stretch, grab your Sharpie, and press right where you're feeling the pain or the tension. And when you let off, you re-stretch, and then you will usually notice that it's either gone, it's lessened, or it's moved somewhere else. And what do you do, Enid, if it's moved somewhere else? And you go after you it. You chase it. <laughs> okay, Head, keep going. Sorry headaches, to interrupt are, you. Head, headaches, you do have to chase every once in a while because they seem to move around. Yeah, you do. And they seem to have yep. a pattern. And those are not the only areas you would do. Anyway, go ahead. That's just the start. Go ahead, Enid, sorry. Headaches seem to have a pattern of their own, and, and most of them have been there for a while. So it often means that, yes, you chase them from one place to another until they're gone. But in, in, in Bonnie's books, there are maps and many more points that are, are on the maps than we've done just now. Um, yes. I, I wanted to say one thing about back pain. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I want to say one thing about back pain. Like there's more. It, okay, if, go ahead. Um, if you can't stand with your feet together, knees straight, and bend over and touch the floor, you have 50% chance of having low back pain. If you can't lie on the floor on your back with your knees bent and your feet held down and your hands behind your neck and do one sit up, you have 50% chance of having low back pain. If you can't do either one of those, you probably have back pain or you're gonna have it tomorrow. 
So just make sure that you can do those two things, touch the floor and do one sit up. If everybody in the country <laughs> could do those two things, we'd have a lot more less um, back pain and people out of work and expense uh, with expensive insurance. But just those two things, if you can do those, you, you have protected yourself. Shoulder shrug series? Say that what? Shoulder shrug series? <laughs> Will you just complete what, what we did for the... <laughs> okay, and up Thank and down, you. like we did with the music and it wasn't boring. <laughs> One but more. often when I'm working with my clients or, or for myself, I don't always have music in my room. Actually, I usually don't in between sessions. So I think the chiropractic office where I work thinks I'm crazy, but in between each person, I'm in my doorway after I've cleaned my room um, doing some range of motion exercises because otherwise by the end of the day, I'm gonna be hurting. So I, again, I would really advise everybody to pick a few exercises. You don't have to do all of them, but you do need to do enough so that by the end of the, again, counteract what you're physically doing all day, that you're not hurting and can't move and have to take an ice bath. Invest in yourself. Yes, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Invest in yourself. Absolutely. And again, um, for me, even though when I first got into this work, I was all about the trigger points and I really didn't focus on the exercise at all. Um, I'm 63 now. Enid's, Enid's 83. Career this long is doing just very simple range of motion exercises throughout the day. Um, and again, it's range of motion. And what you'll find over time is that the muscles respond over time, just like they say. At this point, when I start to feel my shoulders up around my ears, as soon as I start doing an exercise, my muscles know that they're supposed to let go and relax. So that's, uh, that's my, my career going for since 1985 is doing the exercises with doing some crook work in between Enid I think works on herself every day um and, have and to. it's great you benefit know. from um, from doing yeah from doing the trigger points on herself every day yeah and um because I've been an athlete all my life and because I've had accidents then my muscles have been used and abused and hurt and it's the myotherapy and the bonnie prudent myotherapy and the exercise that make it possible for me to do anything i want to do and we hope you have some questions for us we're here to answer them yes and donnell have we have we had any yeah go ahead have we had any chat questions well, um, Diane said, wow, you're in your 80s? You look great. So um, no, the questions <laughs> haven't started coming in yet. But Sandy, what I'd love is if you would turn around and grab the pain eraser book. And um, could you, are there diagrams in there of, that would match yes, what, there are. what yes. we were talking about this evening? Yes. <laughs> So all of Bonnie's books, and if you go to, I think Donnell will again, um, email everybody information. Um, if you go to bonnieprudent.com, it has, we have a shop that has these books in it. Um, there are books, there are videos. Um, we haven't caught up to the streaming world yet. So you can do DVDs. Oh, but we do also have um, two online classes through my learning library with um, Bonnie Prudent Myotherapy Level 1, Level 2. And Donnell, we're also developing um, a video course for, um, for therapists to work on themselves for back pain. So that we've already shot the video for that. Um, and we will, that will be available hopefully in 2022. But yes, the book is like a recipe book, uh, Pain Erasure. Each chapter has a different section 
um, rid yourself of headaches and jaw pain. It's got the illustrations in it and tells you where to work as well as the exercises that are needed. And the back of the book, like I said, the back of the book does have the illustrations in it. Very good, very good. You were, your um, video is a little bit delayed, Sandy, but um, we were okay. able to see some of the diagrams. A question did come in from Sherry. And she's asking, is a foam roller as effective as trigger point release? <laughs> um, Go ahead, Ian. I, I don't think so because it doesn't, it, it rolls over it like a massage and you want to be specific to your trigger point so that you can hold the pressure on it. All right. It's a totally different technique in terms of um, it's not myofascial release. We're doing one point at a time to help the muscle to let go. Now, is uh, this something that, um, well, let me back this up. Um, tomorrow when, um, we do the follow-up email with a recording link to tonight's presentation. Um, there will also be two handouts, um, black and white of diagrams of exercises that we saw this evening. And there will also be a couple of links to video so that you can see some of the exercises, Enid doing some of these exercises. What I wanted to say is, it, you know, it's a great idea if, when this information is received, you print out the um, two pages of exercises and maybe tack them up where you can see them. And you can also, I would guess it would be a great tool to share with your clients that they come in with neck or shoulder pain or tension in their upper back. And you can, you can point out that these are simple exercises. So it's a value add to your client. And um, we'll make the massage, I think, that much more effective. Is that, is that right? That uh, is my guess. Yes. Yes. And I've actually, in my practice, um, I used to do straight trigger point therapy and stretching. I used to do straight body improvement myotherapy. Um, we also had a full course of massage when I went through the third. So in my practice, I also do massage, but I add the trigger point therapy into it. And then afterwards, because I can't really do a lot of the stretching on the table um, because I'm the client is nude and they're draped, of course, the whole time. Once they're off the table and they um, are clothed again, then I go through the exercises with them. And they oh, see wonderful. a great deal of benefit from doing that. Yeah. And if Very somebody good. comes in with a headache, you can get rid of the headache so they can enjoy their massage. Then they'll tell all their friends. <laughs> Great idea. Um, That's right. I, oh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? Nope. Okay. I was just going to say, I've seen a couple of questions come up. Yes, we have. Um, well, first of all, um, greatly appreciate the information. Thank you for the reminder about self-care and um, they'll look into the book and the online classes. Where can someone find tools you use today? They're in our store on our website at bonnieprudent.com. The right. other thing I wanted to mention is that the online classes that Sandy was talking about, if you go to our homepage and sign up, they'll let you know when, when there's a flash sale. So, um, and then because the, because the online courses are recorded, you can work at your own speed. All right. And Jim is asking, do you deal with secondary or latent trigger points in this method? And if so, how is it worked then? Do you want me to read that again? Um, no, I think I got it. We, yes, of course we do. Um, what we can again, what we consider to be primary or matrix trigger points are the points when we press on them, they refer somewhere else. 
And all of the other trigger points that we press on, we consider to be secondary or latent. Um, I'm trying to think, Enid, if, again, our work is different from Travell's work. Go ahead, Enid. Well, what, when you when you have- We're not feeling for tight bands of tissue. Right. When you're experiencing pain, then your trigger points are active. Now I have trigger points all over me, but I don't have any pain. So those trigger points are latent. They're sleeping, waiting for me to fall down or something and then activate so I can get rid of them again. So the active yes. ones are the ones that are causing the pain. All right. And uh, Dino is asking any AMTA or NCB TMB CEs with the um, bonnieprudent.com classes. All of our classes, any class that we teach, whether it's live or online, are NCB TMB approved. Yes, All we right. are approved providers and have been ever since the inception of NCB TMB. Yes. Okay. And um, is it all right if um, people reach out to you directly? I, I know Enid has her um, email address on the screen. Um, Sandy, it, it, you know, would people contact you through Bonnie? Sure, they can. Or through yes. the website? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, they can email Enid or um, my uh, email is uh, my name, Sandra Dirks at yahoo.com. Great. Okay, I'm going to remove the spotlight and um, which is easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> so, always wonderful learning this. I'm not sure why it's not letting me, but um, well, Sandy, wrap it up for us. You've got the main number. <laughs> I, I want to thank everyone. We just, again, yes, we want to thank everybody. And uh, we really appreciate all of you who have joined us today, as well as those who will watch us later. And uh, our goal, again, is to simply help people live the healthiest life they can live and to be able to do what they want to do without pain. So we thank you, Donnell and Biotone, for allowing us this opportunity to uh, reach out to people and, and again, help them. Sounds so cliche, but I really feel that if people aren't hurting and if they can physically do what they want to do, they're going to have a better life. And I just think that there's so much stress right now for everybody. I don't know about anybody who's listening, but my practice has gone through the roof. Um, people are, people really need us. And so we need to take care of ourselves well, I, I, so that we um, can take care of others. There you are, Donnell. Yes, I'm back. I, I finally figured out how to get you off the spotlight. <laughs> so I okay, could awesome. awesome. But, um, you know, self-care, when, when I was working with Massage Magazine, one of the things they said was, a therapist's career might only last three to five years if they don't have yes, good yes. body mechanics, self-care, and business knowledge. And the more you can do up front to um, be proactive in your self-care is prolonging your career. And um, both Sandy and Enid are examples of this. Um, before we end this evening, I do again want to thank you so much. This is our last Edgy Talk of the Year. Coming up in 2022, which is amazing, um, January 11th, we start with Heath and Nicole Reed, and their topic is Thai Yoga Massage Medley, Thai Wooden Stick, Thai Herbal Compress, and Thai Table Stretches. On January 25th, we have Kathleen Leeson and it's post-operative massage following plastic surgery. So a great lineup of edu talks for 2022. And um, thank you all for attending. Thank you, Biotone. Be safe and stay healthy during the holiday season. Uh, tomorrow, once the video posts to um, the Biotone website, we will send the follow-up email 
with the handouts, links to some video exercise videos for self-care to watch. And um, it will also uh, discuss the January edu talks that are coming. What a, what a crazy year it's been and what a fabulous year is going to be ahead of us. And again, thank you all for joining us. Take care. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Enid. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.